I've been using this tool called Dropstone and I want to be completely very clear from the beginning. They are not promoting me in any ways. This is not sponsored and I'm sharing this purely based on my own experience. After using it extensively, I genuinely believe that there is some real engineering depth behind this product. It looks quite and minimal on the surface but under the hood it's far more advanced than it initially appears. I can't cover the entire application in a single video so instead I want to focus on one specific feature that truly caught my attention which is the Dropstone's memory system. This is the part I originally assumed was marketing hype but after rigorous testing I honestly couldn't break it. It worked exactly as they described. So in this video let's look at what Dropstone memory can actually do in a short and practical way. So Dropstone learns from you without needing to be explicitly instructed. It observes how you work, it tracks what you approve and what you reject and the patterns you consistently follow. If you reject inline styles, it remembers that. If you always use arrow functions, it notices. If you fix bugs in a specific way, it learns from that. What makes this different is transparency. When Dropstone uses something it has learned from you, it clearly shows an visible memory applied card. You are never guessing whether the system remembered something or not. It tells you directly. Now, a lot of people ask whether this exists in tools like Cursor or Cloud Code. Cursor has taught Cursor rules, but that's you manually writing instructions. The system itself doesn't learn from your behavior. Cloud Code has Cloud.md, which works the same way. Manual input, no learning loop. Dropstone operates differently. It learns from actions, not just prompts. At this point, instead of going deeper into the comparison, I want to show how this works in practice. So this is Dropstone inside the app. There are two experiences, which is Horizon and Editor. We'll talk about setups, modes, advanced workflows in another video. For now, we're just in Editor mode, which is similar to Cursor, which is an AI-assisted coding environment. Before testing the memory, a quick explanation of modes. Modes define how the AI behaves. You have Code, Architect, Ask, Debug, and Orchestrator and you can even create your custom modes for your own AI agents. What's important is that the AI can switch modes on its own when needed without you forcing it similar to how Cloud adapts contextually. Then there are models. This part has generally surprised me even with smaller low capability models, the accuracy remains strong. The system clearly understands which mode it is in and adjusts the behavior automatically. With Cloud 4.5 Opus, the experience is excellent, no question in that. But for this test, I deliberately chose a weaker model, GPT-4 Mini, because I wanted to see if Dropstone could still hold up under pressure. If you have any open source model installed locally, they show up here automatically. And if you're on the pro plan, it's effectively unlimited. You can route requests to your own local models through their systems. Now let's test test the memory. First, I asked the AI to create a simple React button component. Then I make a few manual changes. After that, I explicitly tell the AI that I prefer arrow functions and destructured props. And I ask it to remember this for a future request. This is where things get interesting. Dropstone stores this experience in long-term memory, not just within the current chat session. And it actually uses that knowledge later. When it applies the memory, it shows it clearly in the UI. That's not a coincidence. That's stored behavior being reused. To test this further, I asked it to create a React input component. You can immediately see that the memory is applied. The AI does three things very clearly. It remembers the preference. It signals that it is using the stored memory. It generates code that follows the learned pattern. And that test passes. Now for the next test, I asked the AI to remember a simple API key. Then I close the chat entirely. In a brand new session, I ask for it again. And it still remembers. That's persistent memory across sessions, not short term context. Let me explain what is actually happening here. You may have seen memory features in other tools, but Dropstone goes further. It learns procedures, sequence, patterns, and decision paths. 
internally it uses multiple memory types like episodic sequential associative and procedural this is exactly what's needed for real coding work at past mistakes fixes and workflows matter we can also see how the ai actually understands the code base in a visual interface so we can do that so for that what i'll do is i'll just open my dashboard and what you are seeing here are the memory nodes a live graph of how dropstone is learning your code base over time because i use the smaller models and made structural changes to the code base some links are in perfectly aligned that's expected but the important part is the system is clearly tracking every relationships pattern and evolution in real time this level of engineering is rare and very few people are talking about it because of this i personally stopped using cursor and plot code and switched to dropstone early on yes it has bugs but they are occasional and the direction of the product is very clear the core ideas are solid and the execution is real i strongly recommend trying it yourself to fully understand what i'm showing here you need to experience it on your own code base to see the difference if you found this useful leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video peace